Hey, what's up? Welcome to the Silver Wait, 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 wait. I'm so I just forgot to put in my necklace. He's not gonna edit this. He's not gonna cut this. Out. I'm not gonna edit it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hello, welcome to the Silicon Valley podcast. Sorry, my friend Sophia is uh, taking the time to, you know, look pretty for you guys, which is good. Yes. Um, but today we have an exciting podcast. Um, what are we going to talk about? What has happened today? <laughs> what happened today? What happened today, Andre? You went to an event that many people would kill to go to. Like a lot of people applied and they didn't get accepted. I actually applied to that event in Y Combinator, the startup school thing. And I did it. I got, I got rejected twice, uh, but it's fine because right now I'm in Nashville. So I wasn't going to go either. But you were at that event. Andre, how was it? Was it like super, super cool? Like everyone was saying it would, it would be I, I i heard there was gonna be like sam altman and all that yes so sam, Alt sam altman was at that event paul graham was at that event the ceo and president of uh, y combinator gary tan uh was at that event i took a picture of them which was very cool <laughs> but and they and they uploaded it to the y combinator uh, yeah they, they uploaded it to their site which has like three hundred and twenty thousand people so i'm gonna tell that story in a bit but uh basically uh yeah Basically, the startup school is uh, they bring in a bunch of uh, previous uh, YC people and give talks and advice about the startup world, the current state of AI. Uh, that's why Sam Altman was there, basically talking about what AI company should you build? Otherwise, we kill you, right? <laughs> exactly, which is like some important questions and 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 things to do. So there are two parts of this event. So there are the talks, and then there is the networking. So basically you, uh, this is how it happened. So I, I started going to the event, not by car, I ran there. And just quickly, like the reason why I run every time to different events if they're closed is because you can get exercise in while you're working 14, 16 hour days. Uh, so I was basically running to this event. I got to the place all sweaty. I changed myself. And then I started meeting all these like very cool founders that were outside waiting for the door to open. You know, once the door opened, I just go in and I start seeing all the people of Y Combinator that I've seen in the, like the YC YouTube. And I was like, oh my God, like literally they're here. I can touch them. I can talk to them. I can, you know, like pitch to them, uh, which was like something that I wanted to do wanted now here's the bad part so it's uh it, the event basically brought about like 200 people uh 200 to 250 uh and from those 200 people everyone was attacking every single partner so it's kind of like hard to get in and make them talk so i said okay let the let, let the conference begin and like all these people start talking about you know all the all the lessons for the startup world and the current states uh, of the different industries. Uh, and then because everyone was like standing behind and I was like going, going like to them, I just stood up and I went and I started introducing myself and the reaction that I got was super, super disappointing. Why? Because I started talking to them and, um, I, like I open up conversations. I'm very charismatic and 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 uh, like well, I like to think. Uh, but these guys were like, no, 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 watch watch the conference. Like it it seemed like during that time, they didn't want to talk to other founders. And then when they actually had time and wanted to network, it was impossible to talk to any of them because you they would have a conversation with one founder, and then you would just like wait fifteen minutes and then supposedly you would go next and but there, there was just, just too many people so it was like i i get it like it, it, it's not uh it's not ideal but uh i mean that's why i decided like okay what how can i reach these people in another way right so i started observing like the good latino <laughs> <laughs> um observing what are the closest people to this people, uh, to the, to these partners that basically everyone wanted to talk to. Um, and this was, for example, their wives or like their close friends and no one was talking to them because I, I observed who they're interacting with. So I was like, okay, maybe I go to them and say, Hey, um, 
I'm Andre, like, uh, are you a founder? Like, what are you working on? And then they would be like, no, I'm actually like uh, friends of, uh, of, of this partner or like- And you already knew, and you already knew they I were already knew, exactly. Uh -huh. So I did that and uh, I don't know, like it, they didn't get me introduced because they were busy, but just the fact that you talk to these people will eventually yeah. like in the future have comment, right? Yeah. Uh, about like making your idea and your startup like be heard and, and like in the radar of these people. Yeah. Can um, I pause you there just on that note? Because I think you're saying a very important hack and because a lot of people ask, how do you network? And sometimes people think that to network, you have to go direct to the person you want to speak to but most times you need to start with the people that surround these people because then these people can refer you to the person you want to get to so it's not only like hey i'm sofia and no one knows me and you know nothing about me but it's like hey i'm sofia i actually know your wife or i actually know this friend of yours uh they told me i should talk to you and then in their heads it's like a barrier falls down because now there's a there's like a trust element to that. Uh, I also do that a lot, like being very aware of what the circle of the person I want to talk to is. Um, have that in mind because there's this theory of the, like the degrees of separation. It's like everyone you ever want to meet, it's like eight people away from you. Um, mm -hmm. But you can start getting closer to that people like in layers eventually. So I just wanted to highlight because that's something that's, that's been very important for my life and my career as well. Um, and now go back, going back to you, I pass you the mic so that you can finish telling us what else happened in Y Combinator. Are you going to tell us also about what they talked about in the, in the, um, presentations? Yeah. So I think everyone will like, wants to ask like, what's going to happen with the AI space? Um, yes. Yeah, and the, so, the world in general, man. Yeah. So basically it was so funny because there is like, uh, the CEO of Vanta, which is like a, a seek to compliance company for, for software. And then there was like a, a bunch of other like uh, speakers. So there was like the uh, co-founder of Twitch, which is Michael Siebel and like, which are partners as well as Y Combinator. And then, uh, Sam Alvin appeared out of nowhere with like a bunch Sam of security <laughs> and like, he basically walked to the stage and immediately everyone was like, focus <laughs> everyone with their phones like taking pictures which is like pretty insane uh and then uh basically they started having the conversation about uh you know like uh what's next for open ai and basically like their main focus is uh to you know like go because uh, go to agi which is basically uh so it, it has like different definitions but uh eventually it's like an ai can do all the work and everything that a human can do, right? Uh, so in terms of that, uh, it's undefined when they will achieve AGI because a common question by the audience was like, when will AGI be achieved? And the, the answer is, we don't know. Like uh, it could be two years, it could be seven years. Like, we don't know. Be a month. Be a month. But yeah, that's, that's the funny thing because no, I'm not a month, I don't think. But the funny <laughs> thing is like, for example, uh, LLMs, uh, or yeah. like a general AI, mm -hmm. basically uh, from this point, like for, for example, from GPT-4.0, it's going to keep on getting smarter and smarter and smarter and smarter, and it mm -hmm. will reach a point of like breakthrough. And once that reach, it reaches that point, it will just go exponential. So that's mm -hmm. like the hypothesis that Sam Altman is saying is like, if we don't know what innovations will do in the future, we just need to figure them out. But eventually we'll get to a state where like, AI codes itself or something, right? And that just like it keeps exponentializing the, the intelligence. Um, so that's a, uh, number one. Uh, num number two is like, what's going, like, what's going to happen? GPT-5 is coming. Like I swear, <laughs> like he mentioned GPT-5 a bunch of times so that we can expect that. Um, and yeah, and the final thing I would say, like uh, there's like a common question of like, what should founders build uh, so that uh, they don't get killed by OpenAI or any other LLM company. And the answer was, if you're scared that or product, a bit like or GPT models are going to get smarter and that's a risk for you, then you're in the wrong business. You should benefit from the models getting smarter. Mm -hmm. So the moment the model gets smarter, it, it brings value to your customers, right? Um, of course, you're not going to be like a direct competitor, like a uh, chat GPT, like a uh, service or whatever. And also there's like other things like chat GPT wrappers, which are kind of like a risk 
if you see like, for example, WhatsApp messaging or Instagram, like automated messaging, sure, you can, you can have like a time, you can make money in like a specific, like a, a short amount of time, but because all this, you know, like uh, Meta uh, controls WhatsApp and it's doing like, I, I, Mark Zuckerberg just released like one of the biggest models that beats uh, GPT-4 uh, and it's open source. Um, What's the model? Can you say the name? Can you share the name? Uh, I, I, I forgot the name. Um, is it? No, I, I, I'm not sure what the name is. Yeah, you, you can look it up online. It, it, it happened this week, but uh, basically like their plan is to integrate all these AI products into WhatsApp. You see uh, Meta AI, like, or uh, Instagram is testing new features about like automated messaging for creators. So if you get messages on creator uh, for creators, like, you'll have like an integrated LLM product that just responds automatically um, and it'll let users know. So a bunch of these things are going to happen in the industry, but, and so avoid making rappers do actual, you know, like technology innovation. If you want to, you know, like become a, a serious player in the industry. Um, Qu question there. Well, just, I looked it up. It's Llama AI. <laughs> That's yeah, the name. It's Llama, but I think, it's, I don't know if it's uh, Llama 3 or I think it's Llama 4 or something like that, yeah? Okay, yeah, just a question on, on that of the rapper thing. Uh, so what they meant is, um, I didn't get it. I didn't quite get it. Can you give us another example? Like so another, like a, a simple like uh, open AI rapper is like, for example, you see all these AI apps that basically do the same, like, oh, user inputs uh, something and then it gets a response but mm. there but like like rapper... customer like customer um but like customer uh, drop, uh -huh. yeah no. yeah exactly so you would say oh i have this app that is a gpt that gives you recipes right but mm. actually like a wrapper would be a prompt which basically focus on creating like good recipes and like uh, you give it instructions and then yeah. like whenever the customer goes and says, ah, yeah, like I want the recipe for something, then yeah. it'll always give you that. So that's like kind of a wrapper. What's okay. not a wrapper is basically the same example of like giving recipes, but you can take a picture of like your fridge. You need to do processing of the image. Then you need to basically like categorize every single food you have, then extract some like, a, I don't know, like a nutrition data, and based on that and your personal, you know, like um, fit, uh, uh, nutritional requirements, it builds up a recipe specific for you. That's not the wrapper. That's like more complex and, and it provides more value. So, and it has to do with the user experience as well, user distribu distribution as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that, that, that's basically it. Um, but yeah, yeah, but that's okay, you know. uh -huh. I'm dying. pie and I'm dying. So can we pause this for a second? Um, I don't know. How yeah. this is. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, we had uh, biological issues with <laughs> Sophia. She had like a cramp, um, like on her foot, but anyway, <laughs> back to it. Uh, those are the basic, like basically what he. That's what happens about. when you're hearing about what's gonna happen very soon. When you hear about AGI, your whole body like just freaks out. But yeah, yeah continue. Yeah. It's a tension. It's a tension. <laughs> um, but yeah, basically, okay. So, so I, I think I, I mentioned everything like important with Sam Altman. Uh, and a funny thing that happened at the end is like Sam Altman was walking, and I was like, oh, should we go take a picture with him, right? And then one guy runs, like runs towards him and says, can I take a picture? And then you see like this horde of like 200 people, like everyone lifting up from their seats and, and running to, towards the, him. And it was like, uh, you know, like uh, 50, 70 people like around him and we just take like a, a, a <laughs> there. Uh, and then basically his security came and got him into the car and they, they just went uh, uh, back to the open AI offices. But uh, that, he did yeah. take the picture though, right? I think I saw it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think we'll put it, maybe we'll put it on the thumbnail or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's, that's really cool. And what do you think? Uh, I mean, I I heard, I hear what you said about the conferences, uh, about the conference of Sam Altman. What would you say was it the main takeaway you got, not only from Sam Altman, but from the rest of the, the conversations you heard? What's the main thing you were like, oh, that's, that's actually cool? Well, uh, I think 
it's it's very common like for Y Combinator to give uh, you know like this advice, but basically it says the the most common mistake that entrepreneurs or founders are gonna make within the next year, two years, or whatever is that they're focusing on something else other than talking to customers and building a product. If you're not doing those things all the time, then you're wasting your time. Like other other stuff like than that. And um, so yeah, basically that 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 was like a you know like one of obvious but like the biggest takeaways because it's hard. It's hard to you know like make excuses and say oh yeah I'm gonna go to this networking event to basically try to find customers when there's another more efficient way to you know like uh, get customers you know um, so yeah. And that's why I started like getting anxious because I wasn't getting new customers. I wasn't a I wasn't able to connect with any of the partners. So I was like super anxious. I decided to leave. I, I was like, no, I'm getting anxious. I need to keep on building product. I need to keep talking to people. Uh, and then I was like, what can I benefit from going to YC? And basically I just posted like a bunch of stories, like tagging Y Combinator, tagging Gary Tan. And yes. uh they reposted one and I was like, okay, perfect opportunity. So, uh, so, so, uh, basically what I did is like, uh, I was getting a bunch of traffic to my Instagram account and I just like posted like a bunch of tutorials and videos about Bytespace. And then like people started booking uh, calls like for the next week. So that was like something that's something like, uh, you know, like uh, happens on the spot and you need to figure it out and, and take action like immediately. So yeah. awesome. and that's something super important that I think we also forget sometimes as founders being backed up by someone that has great reputation is a great move, be it a person or an organization. Just by Andre saying like, yeah, I was at an event at Y Combinator, like people trust him way more. Or if he says like, yeah, I know this person that has built great, great stuff, people trust them way more. Um, so it's also important to remember that the network you build is not only about like asking for advice and whatnot, but also about like making more robust your own image. Um, so congratulations for that. Like I was so excited about the Y Combinator thing. I'll just like go like it. I haven't liked it yet, uh, but I'll definitely do that. Um, I think we're getting actually to the time of the event, but I have a question. Probably we'll explore it uh, tomorrow on the podcast because you did mention like you enjoy running to events because like you're working either days of 14 to 16 hours. Sometimes you don't get the time uh, to actually do exercise. So you have to optimize uh, your time so that you can you get to do exercise. I'd love to explore that thought um, because that's something we talk about regularly like how much time we actually invest in the work we do and i mm -hmm. think next podcast we should explore that more because some people have asked me like is it necessary to work 14 hours a day or 16 hours a day uh, for the mission you care about and i have an interesting answer to that <laughs> so i'd love to, yeah, to i have i have question. many thoughts too yeah, yeah so if, you. you're, if you're watching this until this point it's a great opportunity to subscribe hit the bell icon and uh, be ready to hear whether you actually need to work 13 to 15, 16 hours a day, uh, which is the thing we're going to talk tomorrow. Also, we have a special guest tomorrow, which is a six, well, 17, he just turned 17, 17 year old kid killing it. He's a genius. And uh, I wouldn't even call him a kid. Like you see him no. and he's a man. Yeah, he has a mind of like a 30 year old. Like it's insane. <laughs> but like when you look at him, he looks old, but it's, uh, we'll get to that we'll get to we'll that see him just, tomorrow stay tuned yeah exactly yeah and mm -hmm. and just to close it um thank you so much andre for sharing your experience as i was mentioning at the beginning lots of people would kill or die to go to a y combinator event that's the dream of many startup founders you were there you shared with us some of your main learnings and that's huge like that brings a lot of value to us so i i'm really thankful for that and I'm glad that I'm going to see you tomorrow because I am in Nashville right now, but I'll be in San Francisco tomorrow back home or temporary home. Um, okay, everybody, we love you so much. Keep building, keep pursuing what you want to pursue. And yeah, we love you. Yeah, okay, bye. Have a nice day. Ciao. This is where I'm looking for.